I think it was October of last year that I was in Spokane, Washington, filming at the JK Boot Factory. And I learned a lot through this experience, not just about boots, but I learned a lot about making a video like this and, and making content with people that I didn't know before. And um, they kind of are were trusting me a little bit to, you know, make a, a video that is that makes them look good, but is also honest and not too um, salesy. You know, the point wasn't to necessarily to sell boots. The point was to make a, a neat video. So I learned a lot from the process. I also learned a lot about boots and I got to know Tim and become friends with him. He's joining me today in this discussion. He's in Roseburg to interview my dad for their new podcast that they are um, launching soon. So I'll link to that. I'll link to that so you can catch that discussion. But JK Boots is a family business and Tim has kind of grown up in it and now he's actively helping grow the business and you know in a lot of trades and crafts and and these types of businesses the craft or the trade itself is kind of the easy part uh, the everything else is much more complicated all of the payroll and taxes and customer service and returns and website work and social media all these things it's that stuff's not that fun it can be but it's kind of the thing you almost have to like jump in and just learn as you go so it's stuff this is this is basically my whole world is learning these types of things for essential craftsmen and trying to put them to use so i had a great time chatting with tim about this we're kind of talking about some of the things that he's learned over the years uh, doing this with jk boots so if you have interest in growing a business in this way you'll really enjoy this discussion and uh, I couldn't be happier to welcome Tim on the show. So with no further ado, here is Tim from JK Boots. I, get, I, I want to talk about customer service, but um, before that, I, it just occurred to me, I had to ask you about being in Ukraine. Oh yeah. What in the world? Why did you go? So, I, I yeah. know your family's from there, but just give us the quick version yep. of what that trip was all about and and what what how you think about so, it now. So yeah, it was pretty it was it was something else. Um hard yeah, definitely hard hard to find words. Um it's very real. So first thing I'll say. So it's it's very real. Uh, it's not fake, you know, it's not green screens and stuff that they're trying to, you know, simulate a war. Uh, it's very real. So the reason that I went is um, there is a church in Redding, California called Bethel. And they have a huge humanitarian aid department called BGR, Bethel Global Response. And so they do things across the globe. So like right now, I think they're like in six or seven countries and they, they feed, they house, clothe, and they just help. They connect with like the local communities in the area and they set up like supply chains for disaster zones. So okay. like in Turkey mm -hmm. with the earthquake, they're out there right now. And they wow. connected with like um, a local community there, a local like organization, and they just supply finances, logistics, food, water, uh, housing, and they connect with those people. And then they set up the supply chain, and they just they literally just help people. And so they have a team in Ukraine right now, a local team. And I'm friends with the director of that, and so he just invited me to go because he knew wow. that he's actually a customer, and he's from Reading. And so we have a store in Reading, and so he came in and bought boots and stuff, and. Um, and just, we just became friends and he invited me to go and that's how it happened. Cause he knew I was from there and, Whoa. um, you know, I don't know. I just went, um, I didn't, it didn't freak me out or, you know, I just decided that it would be awesome to go and it would be quite an experience and I would feel bad if I didn't go. I feel like I, you know, missed it, missed a chance to mm -hmm. be exposed to something and also help and just assist. So anyways, I went, it was, yeah, it was very crazy. So you know, everything is messed up over there. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a long time, I think, until everything kind of goes back to normal life, especially on the areas where it's like by the front where they've been stuck for a while. So we were, you know, we, we you can't fly into Ukraine because there's no, it's a no fly zone. So we had to fly into Poland and from Poland, you know, get in there and stuff and by train. And the, the, the capital, like the big city, Kiev, is pretty calm right now. Things have kind of pretty much gone back to normal. But as you get further east towards the front, it's like worse and worse and worse. So we were um, in another city called Kramatorsk, which is really close to the front. And then from there, another small town where there's like their base and um, and just, just humanitarian aid. So going to these frontline villages and towns where people are stuck and not leaving. And essentially, 
you know, it's really amazing what they do. They, they, they risk their lives for people to evacuate them, get them out of there, help those who can't help themselves, bring them food, bring them water, bring them supplies, bring them gear. And I think more than anything, just like hope, you know? And so just like, like you're not forgotten and we're still trying to like get you out of there. Their biggest goal is to evacuate people. So Mm. there is, you know, in these little, imagine like around here, like imagine, you know, if if the front line is, I don't know, you know, Portland, Mm -hmm. right? You've got, you've got Eugene, Eugene, you got Salem, you got boring Oregon, right by Mm -hmm. Portland. You know, you got, Clackamas and, 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 you know, all these little towns, Damascus, all these like little, imagine like all the main fighting is in the middle of the city, but then there's all these little communities and towns all around. And there's a lot of people there that are stuck there. And so that's what, that's where they're going. And so we were right, um, around the town of Bakhmut, which is kind of, you know, one of the, it's kind of where the most attention is right now. And, um, that's what we were doing. And I was just along the ride, just helping and assisting the, the, the entire team there is very good. They're very wise they know the area um even you know my friend that i was with um smart guy the the two guys i was with smart guys educated they understand disaster response they understand humanitarian aid they're not doing you know sometimes like um i'm not super experienced but just you know i've been on like gospel crusades to africa and stuff and i've seen weird things sometimes like with when americans or just people that are from the west you know go to help like they'll just go and like you know, bring a bunch of clothes or something or bring bottled water. Well, those things have adverse effects, meaning like, or, you know, bad effects. If you bring a bunch of bottled water, well, then you've got a bunch of plastic and waste, you know, or like you're bringing clothes, but do people actually need clothes? Because if they don't, they'll just burn them or throw oh. them away, you know? And oh. so um, there's this book that was recommended to me to read. I think it was called like When Helping Hurts, and it's like about humanitarian aid. And it's actually about how like certain things that you do actually make things worse. Huh. And so and anyway, anyways, just a lot of respect to BGR because they really committed their lives to this and they really understand how to do it correctly. And so they're very huh. effective. But anyways, that's what we were doing. Um, we did evacuate some people and we went to a lot of, you know, apartment buildings and towns where there's people left, like 90% have left. It's really just this small, you know, contingent of 10 to 15% of the people that are left. And bringing them hope, literally bringing them supplies, trying to get them out of there. A lot of people don't want to go yeah. for strange reasons that, you know, don't make sense to us. But, you know, reasons like, hey, I this is my home. I'm not leaving kind of stubbornness reasons. And then other reasons just literally because they can't because they're old elderly people. Yeah. And, you know, the entire time there's, you know, shelling going on in the oh. background. And um, it's, you know, it's it's real. It's the real deal. So they're know? basically approaching let's say a apartment building and saying, like, do you want to leave and kind of like just in, cold in, in calling essence, people in essence in a way. So the, the local team that's there, there's a few, there's like two or three main guys. They are from there. Oh, so like there, there was one guy in particular, you know, he's like in his fifties or sixties now. And he's like from that region. And while we were with him, everyone knew who he was and he knew everybody. So okay. he was like a local, it'd be like, yeah, you know, I grew up in Spokane and it'd be like, okay, I'm now, you know, helping out. And yeah, I know the Shadle area and the Valley yeah. and Airway Heights and Cheney and Liberty Lake and, and the North side and Wandermere. And, oh yeah, I know this neighborhood over here by Webster park. And I know this neighborhood over here by the golf course. And like, oh yeah, I know that house. And oh, that was my teacher. And mm-hmm. this guy I worked with at the grocery store, like that kind of stuff. And if you know? somebody wanted to leave, they'd be like, talk to Tim, Tim, Tim yeah, can exactly, get you. Exactly, he can exactly. talk to him yeah, and he'll, yeah. and so they, exactly. that guy might say, okay, exactly. this, this, these people bags are ready. Yeah. 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 Take them out. And <laughs> there are people that, you know, he obviously or they don't know and then they go and like but yeah it's it's essentially like they, they go there a lot and so they know already like who's still there who who they've kind of taken away mm-hmm. who they've evacuated and yeah they, they're just they're just that's what they're doing like consistently so they'll be like working for like two weeks and then they'll take like a couple days off go back to see their families mm. and then go back to it it's just this volunteerism i see and um when the when it all first started um uh, one of the one of the guys this um, this incredible guy um, he evacuated like 1500 people on by himself in a sprinter van over the course of like four or five days, you know, like just, just on his own, you know, and that's kind of the heart right now, um, of, of the people, very patriotic, very like defense, like mm-hmm. save, you know, like we want to save people, help people defend kind of our land, defend our home. Um, the political stuff, I don't fully understand. There's a bigger game going on that I don't know, mm-hmm. um, which I would like to learn. But I think ultimately the, the ultimate victim is just regular people that are living there who 100%. have nothing to do yeah. with anything at any kind of level. They're just like us, like living our lives. Totally. And then out of nowhere, you know, and it's just yeah. straight up. And like, yes, people are dying every day. 
Yes, the war is very real. Mm. Yes, both sides are losing heavy casualties. And yes, you know, like it's definitely an aggress an aggressor side mm-hmm. from the side of Russia towards Ukraine. You know, like they're like leveling towns and stuff. It's kind of crazy. It's it's definitely crazy. Like there there wasn't, you know, in one of the villages we were in, like maybe 15 or 20 percent of the buildings were untouched everything else was like touched whether it was like mm. shot up or shelled or literally leveled and um yeah i mean the you know it's, it's very real very what are your eye-opening. parents uh, how do they feel obviously i have any idea how they feel but do they have any interest in like going back and trying to get their their families like good over question. to spokane or so, are they more like i never want to set foot in that yeah, country yeah, again or what, how do they feel so a, f- a few different things so so my parents were born in ukraine my dad is bulgarian by heritage but he was born in southeastern ukraine my mom is, is is full ukrainian by both heritage and birth they don't really identify with ukraine as their like home anymore they identify with america they're yeah. americans yeah. They're, they're they're american citizens they've been here for almost 30 years mm-hmm. they've assimilated they speak the language they built a business they raised their family here and that's the beauty of america and i wish that more americans who were not uh children of direct immigrants could experience a part of this where it's like this is so much better. Everything, everything about here is better in mm-hmm. every way that you can ever fathom or imagine. And so, like, why would we ever ident- identify ourselves with something that was not nearly the level of freedom and opportunity? An example. Also, when my parents first came, you know, when they moved, it was still the Soviet Union. Yeah, and I remember you saying that there was a civil war happening yeah, right the then. Time. So yeah. it was. So my parents came in March of '94. Yeah. And right during that time, there was so there was something called Pridnistrovia, which is an area kind of in the Moldova Russian border. Okay. And basically, it was kind of like a similar thing, like kind of the Crimea thing, where Russia kind of wanted to annex a part of the um, of Moldova to themselves because, after all, it was all Soviet Union, you know. Uh-huh. And um, same thing, it was like loyalists and separatists and like fighting and like you know tanks and 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 guns and bullets and um my dad you know told me many stories about how like you know they're just imagine it's like a regular neighborhood and you're you're walking to work and over here over here and then even like a bullet might ricochet past you you know you're just kind of like walking your way home or he shared with me one time he was coming home from work and there was like a like a a dead body like on the road you know someone was shot and so it wasn't to the level of open warfare like Ukraine and Russia is right now, but it was more like a civil, civil heavy altercation. There were tanks and stuff like that happening, yeah. not extreme as, as Ukraine and Russia situation, but still there. And so the, what happened there was I had an uncle who was already in America who um, did a call to like, you can call your family, you know? And so he did that for my dad. And um, also at the time, the presidential administration at the time was open to Christian refugees from the former Soviet Union because of the religious persecution of the Soviet Union because they were super atheistic and mm-hmm. totally against any kind of religion and very persecuted. Like that, that meant my parents couldn't attend university. They couldn't apply for higher end careers. Even my dad served in the military, low, low, low uh, rank in the military because he's a believer, you mm-hmm. know, wouldn't, you know, no kind of promotion for you because you're a Christian or whatever. Mm. Um, so yeah. And then in March, I think March, it might even be today. It's today the 16th. It might even be March 16th or March 18th or something. They came to America in 1994. Mm. So, you know, almost 20, so 29 years, 29 years ago. And my parents told me that, you know, when they came here and they just saw what's, what's here, you know, and it's, it was kind of like, you know, in movies, you know, paradise type deal, like that was their yeah. kind of impression. And um, as soon as they could, I think it's a five year mark. You have to be in America for five years where you can be a citizen. They became citizens right away. Um, I think within my dad's first week of being in America, he went to work. <laughs> you know, awesome. like it was just so like I'm in love with what's going on. Here. That is so about cool. how they feel about Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely sad, you know, mm-hmm. and it, like it, it breaks your heart. It broke my heart. I wasn't even born there, mm-hmm. you know, but I have like heritage connections there. Um, and so it is sad. It is, it does bother them. It does, you know, really, yeah, it sucks. But in terms of like, what's their home, their, their home is here yeah. you know? and they're, and they're so happy that they made the, the decision at that time when the opportunity and door was open yeah. to come here that they did that. Oh yeah. man. Talk about 
Yeah, that that's probably it's probably a lot of feelings of gratitude yeah. as, aside from like the terror and like sadness of seeing that happen to the country, but also some level of gratitude. Like, wow, we are so fortunate that yeah. our family and our yeah. kids and our business and everything is yeah. not there. I, I love everything about the United States. Yeah. And I think it's the greatest country in the history of the world. And my parents are on the same page. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that we, we reflect that, you know, in it with the commitment to make product here, build our business here, mm-hmm. all that stuff. So yeah, like America's amazing. Okay, next topic. I want to talk about JK Boots. I was there in, I think it was October. Or yeah. maybe No, it was October. September. Okay, yeah. yeah. And it was a really cool experience. I've never been inside a place like that. Um, it's it's manufacturing, but it's this really neat high-end product, and it's extremely custom, but yeah. th- people also <laughs> have to you know get them done. And so... You, this has kind of been your whole life because your dad was, yeah. you know, boot maker. Yeah. Um, and at this point, you're really involved. So what, what, what's your day to day like? And what, what's your role at JK? And here a, a few minutes ago, you're explaining how you've kind of feel like you've had a change of strategy with, I don't know, some aspects of maybe not customer service, but just your evolution and thinking about yeah, like serving our your approach customers to like the marketplace. I think. You yeah, say, it's yeah. just such a different. Well, I, I don't I don't know if it's that different because customer service and a marketplace is as old as time, but right. the internet and people communicating That's the kicker. Yeah. is mm-hmm. different. And so it's funny, like even your dad, who's been in it forever, a lot of the aspects of the boot business, he's probably are also kind of new to him, yeah. <laughs> you know, like getting, yeah. uh, selling boots to yep. somebody in Florida and having to right. answer their questions is not something that he's been doing since, you know, yeah. 94. Absolutely. So, um, a lot. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpackage there. I mean, ultimately, you know, my, my brother and I, we grew up very close to our dad. We grew up kind of in the shop and we've always been about, you know, the, the craft, the product, um, the family aspect, you know, making good stuff, mm-hmm. doing doing all of that. And there, there's this, you know, yeah, I mean, I just had to grow and change personally, um, you know, and with when it comes to how to make people happy. Um, that's the goal. We want to make people happy. We want to make customers happy. And our, you, you know, your idea of that might be different than what the maybe a customer's idea of that is, or just kind of the world's idea of that. I think like earlier I shared, like my brother and I, we're very like fair, um, honest, like logical, like justice, you know, style thinking where it's like it has to be like really logical, it has to make sense. Like, mm-hmm. you know, hey, okay, um, you know you paid for this, you will receive this in this amount of time. Like it's very like logical. Mm-hmm. And I just think that sometimes that isn't always the actual answer for satisfying a person or making them happy. It's more about you need to do whatever you need to do to make sure that the person feels taken care of, mm-hmm. you know, respected, make sure they feel like they got the best possible service. And it's, it's hard to put a word definition on that because it can be so different for every person. Mm-hmm. And so I think just the process of setting up that to be a system where it can be repeated Mm. and it can be effective and like it can, it can work on its own without, you know, without me having at two o'clock in the morning to, you know, like worry about, okay, well did, did this, did this individual, did their question get answered the way that I think it should have been answered? And did they receive the answer that they thought they were supposed to get, you know? So Mm -hmm. like that's kind of been the transition. And I think that what I've just been learning is with customer service, they're kind of, it's not necessarily about like, okay, like, you know, A plus B equals C. It's more about like, hey, here's the goal. Here's the target. There's mm. a few different roads to get there. Mm. It could be a phone call. It could be an email. It could be, hey, we need to make do this for this person. We need to make this work for this person. And it's just about do whatever you need to do to make sure that a person is happy and they had a good experience with your company. Mm. And before it was like, I wanted to put that into a formula. And it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that because people, everyone's different. And yeah. everyone communicates a little bit differently. And so this is, this is ultimately the, 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 not the price that you pay. That's a, that's a wrong way to put it, but this is the, this is the road and the journey yeah. to having a really good company. It um, comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. I look up a lot to companies now, at least now I do that, um, we use every day and we take for granted. Mm. Uh, for example, like it even maybe it sounds like plenty to say, but like, and I'm sure people have had very bad experiences, but like Uber, mm. Apple, Best Buy, you know, your local grocery store. Yeah. Like ultimately we use those things every single day and 
most the majority of the time you have a you know good experience like you go in there you you just like i I used uber you know to when when we flew in like i it was great Mm -hmm. it was awesome it was there all that stuff and so now it's about like okay how do we provide what people want which is good products that last a long time uh in uh, 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 in a timely manner that's also important and also you have to make sure that they f- that, that it's a good experience like it's comfortable it's safe it felt good if there's an issue it's quickly resolved obviously we want to do everything we can to not have issues you know and the whole thing with 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 policies and systems we're we're big on that because that means like efficiency and it means like a river like if imagine a river you know going through like mountains and stuff like if it's in the river, it's moving. If mm-hmm. it's out of the river, it's not moving. And, mm-hmm. and policies and systems and programs help things move forward. It mm-hmm. helps things be on time. It helps things be on track. And like even when you get when you dive into stuff like how people order or how they get in contact with you or how their order moves through production, like there has to be a flow. I think that there's a really good like analogy, maybe kind of stigma about like you know mom and pop shops. Yeah. There's a reason I think that mom and pop shops ultimately either cap out or like people sometimes have the worst experiences at mom and pop shops at yeah. times, or they have really really good ones. But sometimes it can be the worst at a mom and pop shop because it's exactly that. It's a mom and a pop, mm-hmm. and they don't have that river. And like you know, because that that was us at a time. You're keeping everything in your head, writing it down on sticky notes. Like yeah. that's cool but it's not because Mm -hmm. that's when things get forgotten things get lost things get messed up you know and like that ultimately it does at times still happen today even with us and we're trying to you know always get better and better and better so i I don't know if that was a super vague you know response but customer service in a whole is more than just um some a customer called you answered the phone you answer their questions you you know have a nice day and you hung up the phone it's Mm -hmm. it's bigger than that i would say it's more about the customer experience as a whole. Yeah. Were they able to find you, find what they needed, feel like their questions were answered, yeah. actually have their questions answered, put an order in, get communicated to clearly about how the process will work, and then receive their order and then be happy with the order. You know, mm-hmm. so like sometimes you think that, okay, well, you know, if you're producing a product, like the only thing you have to think about is producing the product. It's not true. You have to think about the entire experience for the customer as a whole because we're both doing the manufacturing and the retailing and the support after. So yeah. we're, we're taking on a, a lot of things here. Yeah. But that's that's the kind of the nature of the beast. And, you know, we're, we're going 100 miles an hour and I'm consistently... And Will, I, I respect my brother so much because he's better at this than I am. And I look up to him for this. You know, like the ability to change the way that you think mm. and just be mature and like grab something by the horns and not let it go until you got to figure it figured out. Mm-hmm. Like grabbing something by the horns, figuring it out, creating the system and, and not letting go of it until you've got the solution, you know. Mm. And um, it, it can be hard. You know, it can be challenging. There are difficult people that you, you just sometimes can't please. That's true. It's really a small percentage. Most people, you know, that 90 to 95 percent they are great people who Mm -hmm. love our product and they like us and thank you so much for that that makes me feel so good you know and they they want our stuff they 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 are willing to wait all this and that's amazing and it's like such an honor and such a pleasure to take care of them serve them do all that and sometimes there's just this five to ten percent that they need more attention they need more help and I think like anyone in the, on the planet can agree that ultimately there's just sometimes it's not a good fit. It just doesn't work. You know, a customer and, and a business, they just don't mesh well together. Or a certain person had a particular idea in their mind of what it should be. It's not that, you know, and that exists. And ultimately I want that percentage to be as you know small yeah. as humanly possible. And that's, that's like what we work on every single day. Like how do we have our experience be better? There's some industries like I'm thinking of certainly the restaurant industry where – um, but also well, the one I'm dealing with right now, we're building a house. Some of the viewers may know, and we've been working with the cabinet shop, yeah. you know, dialing all that in Yeah. and kitchen cabinets and countertops, that whole trade. And also being in a restaurant, I think it has a triple dose of customer service that comes with the territory, possibly even boots, you know, people's footwear is really important to them. So I think, I think you, you is, probably yeah. have more than the average of a quantity of just customer service 
overhead that I happens. I believe that. Yeah. But I, I got a friend in Arizona who has a who does granite, and granite is in a kitchen as well. And <laughs> yeah. granite might be just as bad as cabinets because people are staring at it. It's like the cherry on top. And so if there's something that's not perfect, yeah, they notice that, and it, it, right away. And yeah. so he he's tasked with explaining to people who have maybe never seen countertops go in in their life who are now saying like, well, this is not perfect. And he has to explain them like, actually, this is normal for yeah. this type of a thing. Yeah. And you got to take my word for it. But they have a valid point if there's yeah. something that's not, they're not happy with. Yeah. So he has a tough, uh, you know, it's a tall order. Yeah. I don't know if boots and footwear is quite as intense and f- food also, because, you know, cause somebody's food is, there's a million things in a restaurant that can, require extra customer service but the, my the point f- is you guys are kind of maybe on that side of the right, line a little right. right yeah absolutely and um yeah 100 the food thing scares me i mean that would yeah. I feel like that would be hard too um 100 percent, we're on that side of the line and also yeah it this thing with like the the age of amazon i'll just yeah. say that i love amazon i want to say i respect jeff bezos great like what for an entrepreneur like wow what a guy yeah. you know, plus like, he's all huge and ripped now so yeah, like, exactly. on top of everything else he's got like the discipline <laughs> yeah, to like yeah, yeah and i want to have the innovation <clears throat> and genius of because ultimately like amazon's changed the world forever mm-hmm. and yeah i can order almost anything and it'll be here in a couple of days like that is that's unbelievable like yeah. that's incredible and so, but, but see also kind of like, what's that done is it's now forced. It's raised the bar for every other company out there. And because everybody uses Amazon now, it's like, okay, well the, the, the day and age is like, Hey, quick now, fast, good quality, you know, maybe not always the quality is mm-hmm. perfect, but like awesome, good right now, quick, let's go. And that's, that's just, that's just the call to a higher level for us, you know, yeah. because our customers come to us and a lot of people have a good understanding of like handmade product, like takes time and also like you're not Amazon. And so like, there's a grace if like, for example, you send an email and I want to respond to emails the same day and we're getting closer to that. We're getting better at that. But like we have a lot and yeah. we don't have a huge team. We're expanding it though. Every single day we're, we're tr- looking for more people trying to figure out how to get faster with stuff, you know? And sometimes like somebody w- might send an email and it's like, if you don't get back to them within a day, they get upset. Mm. And I understand that. And I'm not dogging anybody for doing that, but that is a challenge too, because yeah. it's like, geez, Louise, like, okay, I, I, you know, but it's a part of the territory, you know, and it's, it's raising the bar and I want to be challenged and I want to have not just the best boot company, but I want the best company. Like there's something that, you know, like if you go to church or read the Bible and stuff, there's this term called the spirit of excellence. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I want to have that spirit of excellence in our company. Like I take it personally when somebody has a bad experience, like I'm ultimate that, that like hurts, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's not on purpose. We're not doing anything vile. Like we're not trying to offend people or hurt people or, you know, not get them what they want. But like ultimately, damn it, it just Mm -hmm. didn't work out. I didn't have the system for it. I didn't have the solution for it. Yeah, we didn't respond to you in time. Yes, we sent you the wrong thing. Like crap, you know, like it happened. Mm -hmm. And that's that sucks, you know, and so. Yeah, also companies can be like a punching bag because, and this is this is like classic retail tales of retail uh, employees getting abused yeah. because people can, they, I don't know why. And maybe I've done it, although not to the, any extreme, but you can just feel like you can punch it, punch up on a clump company. And right, it's right, not right, like right. a person. It's yeah. a company like, like, yeah, exactly. Like, I, like I might whatever. make a return yeah. at home Depot right. of something that's right. Not that is crosses the line of yeah. kind of like that yeah. sat in your garage for too long and it's that's not okay anymore that, that's a struggle too like the but, whole but i just make them eat culture. it you know yeah, exactly from, from yeah. time to time yeah. I, i'm actually i'm not terrible at that <laughs> but um i'm sure i like, mean like i'm sure recently, i've crossed the line though yeah, yeah. <laughs> like recently um there was i have a friend who um he was traveling to a um a, a show like to to display um his product you know yeah. different business and one of his guys he shared with me he's like hey we could use a tv over there why don't we just buy one use it and then return it yeah and he told me he's like uh, absolutely not yeah 
And I, I'm like, yeah, absolutely not. Because I know what that's like yeah. as the business owner. Like, that's the worst thing. Because there's customers who try to do that to us. Yeah. And it's like so disheartening, you know? Yeah. But that's, that's you know, don't not don't get emotional but about it. But it comes with the territory. There's, territory. there's some percentage of yeah. people who are in their mind, like truly, that's just like, what are yeah. you talking about? And I think companies like Home Depot, Harbor Freight, you know, Walmart, like they're, I respect them because of the logistics and the organization and the level to what to, they've grown. Yeah. That is really like for, for someone who doesn't know, it doesn't have a business. Like, let me tell you, that is so crazy to think about. Yeah. Like Home Depot, what do they have? Like, you know, probably a couple thousand stores now at this point, like yeah, with probably several thousand, several thousand, you know, and it's like all of these products and, and that's so amazing. That's like when, when someone might marvel at, you know, sports athletes and like their accomplishments or like scientists and their, I marvel at like what companies have done. Yeah. Like Elon Musk building Tesla. They, they do like, you know, three or 400,000 cars a quarter now. Like that's amazing. That's so much work. Yeah. So I respect that. I honor that. And you know, um, yeah, it just comes with the territory. Not we. I don't want to make excuses for for any mistakes we made. Mostly, we do a really, 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 really good job. Yeah. And if we do do something wrong, we are on top of it to fix it. Like, and if if there ever is an issue, it's like, hey, what happened? Why didn't it happen? Let's fix it. Take care of this customer. You know, give them all their money back. Get them a free pair of boots. Like whatever needs to happen to make the person happy, because ultimately they did come to us, and we are supposed to provide the mm-hmm. the, the service and the product. So. I've, I've just changed so much and grown and I think I've learned about how my thinking, not my thinking, but like a business is thinking about what is logical and fair, even though it might be logical and fair, it's not about that as much. It's about, okay, you have a customer in your hands. What do we got to do to make them happy? And it's Mm -hmm. like, that's more the goal within bounds, you know, within limits. Like for example, you know, if something like we have a great returns policy and stuff an exchange policy and you can buy a pair of boots and if they don't work out exchange them return them you know like we, we're really we try to be really really good about that we have stores come try stuff on and i mean yeah you, you get those people who they they buy something they exchange it they return it they buy it again they exchange it they do yeah. it a third time <laughs> maybe one of those pairs in between they wore a little bit yeah and it's like you have to kind of like draw the line at a little some bit point, at some really, point yeah. you know um, th- that, and it's tough. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's tough because you want to make people happy. You want to respect them and stuff, but then you also need to draw the line. And so what we're doing every single day, expanding our team, growing our team, getting wiser, getting smarter, trying to think, how do we make our experience the best possible experience? Not just for boots, but just mm-hmm. a company in general, like any kind of, like, I want to be able to say like, Hey, JK boots has the best customer experience of mm-hmm. any company in the world. So that's kind of where we're You know at. what is like, it's kind of sad, but it's just true how how the very best answer to all this is the freaking golden rule. And if you just treat other people, yeah. how you, on both sides, how you want to be yeah. treated, like, God, it's just, it's an almost amazing how powerful that thinking is in, on, in every step of the way. Even when something's like escalated and is bad, if you can almost just like, how would I like to be treated? Okay. Yeah. Treat this person yeah. that same way. Yeah. And that I think if it was more common to like start with there, a lot of these, uh, no, well, I should say not everybody is trained to like think that yeah. way. I remember my mom, she hammered at my head when I was going to elementary school, the golden rule. I almost, I just know the golden rule, even the, the words, the golden rule more than like the rule itself. Cause yeah. she said yeah. the golden rule so and, many times. Yeah. Like I, I want to <laughs> compliment as well. Like, um, the team that we have and like my brother especially and we have we have come a long way from being a you know just the four of us my dad my parents me and will you know to you know a company now that is 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 we've we've we're 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 making people happy like that's mm-hmm. ultimately yes you know we, we do make mistakes and like that does happen and that's why i say there's like that five to ten percent yeah but for the overwhelming majority like i'm so proud to say and like i compliment our team i compliment our people i compliment our customers you know like thank you guys for trusting and believing and like we're doing well like we, we do a lot of things well mm-hmm. you know we do a lot of things good and i'm proud of that but we always have this unending like ambition to just always get better and so you know we we're we're striving for perfection every day and um you know my personal journey has just been like you you can take things really personally sometimes yeah like we were talking about that you know like because it's your baby you know like someone Mm -hmm. went and wrote something it's like you know you can take it personally it's better to not do that and leave all emotion 
outside, which is hard to do personally. Yeah. It's challenging for me. Will is better at that than I am. Um, and so like I'd look up to him just in so many ways. He, he's a great, great, great man. And, um, you know, I, I'm still kind of getting over that like personal attachment part and instead just, Hey, listen, this is a machine. This is a system. This is a thing that you need to make run well, oil it, Mm -hmm. fix it, weld it together, make a new part, take care of this part, take care of this part. And like, it's not personal. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about make good stuff to the best of your ability and take care of people. I wish my dad was here because with contractors and tradesmen, this is like a, a, a little bit different animal because one, you know, customer service on one pair of boots is can be a nightmare, I'm sure. But customer service on like a $80,000 oh, deck next level, job yeah. and you get that 5% person who's kind of fussy and then and you're wrapped up with, on like a big project. And I know there's contractors who who to say take a beating is like put it mildly they go in the hole in fact my dad has a story and i think we talked about it once on the podcast where he he did a whole job for somebody and at the end of it they were just like and people know my dad so they 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 know they're dealing we're talking about an honest yeah. person here yeah, yeah. very extremely christ-like in the in the best ways yes, of being yes. honest and treating and following the golden rule anyways this person was just terrible and base at the end he had he just you know wrote him a check they had to eat the whole job, all the work, and that is that is just I can't imagine like the de- how crushing that would feel to have like put your heart and soul into big time something. So con- I think contractors have it's a different it's a little bit of a different conversation. And again, we're building this house, and the contractor we're working with he's great at at a lot of this because especially with construction, but things happen, and you're using these materials that aren't always perfect you know like a tree (laughs) you don't know exactly what that lumber will look like and things are i don't know it's just a guarantee that there will be things that are choppy and so our contractor has been just really good at communicating and thinking about you know what's the solution that is that works for everybody and yeah luckily i kind of i have an idea how construction works but i could see if i didn't you know if if it was your first time some of that would be pretty yeah. painful to have someone I, I tell think, you like, you can't do that and be like, well, yeah. it's my house. <laughs> exactly. I think this is where the wisdom of, um, I hate using the word system time and time again, but this is where the wisdom of having like a system for your business comes yeah. into play. Mm. Like a good example like of that is, um, you know, if, if you don't set like a route for somebody to order your product or use your service, then you're kind of like setting yourself up to fail in a way because they'll ask or request things mm. that you can't do or don't have the facilities for. And well, you said that you could do it, but then you actually can't, you know what I mean? So mm. like, for example, for us, you know, we have to like think beforehand before someone comes and finds us before someone wants to buy a pair of boots. Okay. Like how do we make this so simple and easy to understand so that the person can't, make a mistake and can't fail. Mm. You know, like way back in the day, I remember um, you could come in and like order or online, you know, when our website first kind of got started and stuff, just order a pair of boots, Mm -hmm. you know? Oh yeah, I want them this color, this height. Well, that's like so disorganized because okay, what model is it? What size are you? If you don't like them, what do we do with them? Mm -hmm. You know, like it it was totally custom and that was like setting ourselves and like them up to fail because we were, you know, you're not providing enough information. It's not clear and stuff. And that worked. And we, we, we grew with that, but like we kept running into this, kept running into this. And so we had to rethink and and kind of think, okay, well, we, people don't know all the things that we know about boots. Yeah. They just want good boots. So how do we display this to them? Almost, you know, like, like it's funny, like Subway with sandwiches, right? Like it's a sandwich, right? Yeah. But hey, bread, cheese, this, right. this, this, like it's kind of, kind of that kind of uh-huh. a thinking, something that's really clear and efficient. And I can't imagine how it is for contractors if they're going to go build some deck or something. It's a custom job. How do you even like do that? You know, that's challenging. That's yeah. really crazy. Well, the, the contractors who are, who've been in business a long time have figured out systems and it's, it, it starts with a uh, pretty clear understanding at the beginning yeah. not just of what the project is but of what um risks or complications may arise yeah. and they can get fixed and 
a lot of communicating. I don't know. I'm not a yeah. contractor. So I, <laughs> I, but my, my heart, I really have a, I feel like a, it's not even a soft spot. I just, I, compassion. I yeah, I, yeah. I just know that there, yeah. they, there are some, there are some contractors who really get abused and because they're good and yeah. because they want to make their customers happy. And so they will just get turned just, and employees too, for that matter, who will just want to, you know, just <laughs> kind of say yes okay yes okay you got it good customer service but it can i don't know i don't, I don't know it, it can it can really get to you yeah um when you know when, when you have a brand that's like online right it's this kind of you know i love social media and i hate social media it's like a it's like the sick thing we were talking yeah. about earlier you know someone has a bad experience and, and then they go online and you know say all these things and um it you know most of the time it's it it definitely can be valid. Like I said, companies do make mistakes and we're not excluded from that. You know, absolutely. We're, we're people too. And you know, we are growing and learning and changing and fixing things every single day. But you know, it's sometimes you feel a little bit helpless as the, as the business because you feel like you're in the court of like public opinion and, and, and so, so to speak. And it's, it's just, Hey, okay. It didn't work out. Why mm-hmm. figure it out? Don't take it personally. You know, don't go commit suicide now because you're depressed because somebody wrote something bad yeah. about you, you know? It's like sometimes I feel that way because when I go read something like so bad, you know, which does it doesn't happen often, happens from time to time. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so disheartening and like so yeah. emotionally bothersome. But just kind of turn off that valve and okay, why, what, figure it out, move on. For contractors, you know, I can't even imagine either. It's maybe a little bit different, I guess, because it's like locally based, yeah. but still, you know, people That's go true. leave reviews, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And like, I can't imagine a boot, it's a pair of boots. It's still a lot of work, yeah. but it's a pair of boots. I can't imagine building an addition or a deck or a house. Yeah. And then plus someone goes and like rips you on the internet. But yeah, true. But with contractors, one nice thing is generally you're speaking to your customer face to face and solving yeah. problems, which, That's true. which is actually people are tend to be nicer I think in w- person, in person yeah. and you can kind of get to a solution easier when, when it's in even just an email or comments online, it's, it's a different, it's a different ball game. Yeah. People are just more comfortable just like bringing out the knives. Yeah. And sometimes even it's weird. People can be, some people can be very rude to us oh. over email. Oh wow. And like v- strangely, like yeah. strangely. Um, I'm just trying to think of, you know, like a real, like I think, you know, n- not, not too long ago, um, yeah, just this guy was like, he just wasn't happy, you know, with, with, with the product he received and everything was right. He just did. He just wasn't happy. Okay. That's fine. I, it happens. Okay. That's all right. I don't, you know, not everybody has to be in love with, with your mm-hmm. product and like, dude, just, just railed on us on the, on really? this email. Like this trash, dude. you don't know what you're doing. You're <laughs> oh, not a boot geez. maker. You know, um, like you should quit. Like, oh geez. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. And like our, <laughs> our, our guys read that stuff, you know? Yeah. And I don't, I just, it was like, wow, this is weird. You know, this is yeah. weird almost, you know? Um, Hey, about systems and then we can probably wrap up, but I will say, um, when I went through, before I went up there, yeah, I went through your tool on your website about getting the size and I don't know why, but I'm like fussy about the size of my shoes or I yeah. should say when my shoes are too big, it really bugs me Does it? when I could feel my yeah. toes, like all like sliding around and like and i feel like my they look huge and so i'm always like trying to get like what's like the smallest shoe i can wear that's comfortable yeah. and fits and so i was like really panicking like oh man how am i gonna like possibly order a pair of boots custom you know high quality boots where the, the sizing is kind of different anyways yeah without trying them on and that tool you guys built to answer this question my boots fit perfect good and i I got it. I'm almost. I, I'm saying this almost just because I'm kind of like dad gum. <laughs> it actually is like perfect. And there was like a couple parts where I was like, like when you're measuring your foot, and my foot was like eleven and a quarter. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, do you go? How do you rent? Right. There's always this thing, and I just followed my, whatever the instructions said. I was like, okay, if you say so. And I got it. I got to admit, they are freaking That's awesome. dead on. That's so so cool. If someone is like me and fussy with your sizing. That's what I did, and if they didn't fit, I'm like I said, you you help yeah. people get them yeah. to the right size, anyways. But I just read that, I read that sizing guide with eagle eyes, and I was like, okay, Good. this is what it says. I'm gonna do it. Good. I said, and awesome. I'm wearing them right now, and I gotta admit, it's like that is 
that probably a lot of work yeah. went into like See, dialing that's, that in. That's the part of it where we think like, how do we make this simple yeah. for people? And like, we're even taking that to the next step now too. We're going to, you know, we're going to make it, we're going to kind of tweak that a little bit and make it even more simple for people. Like nice. that's just always how, how Will and I are wired is like, how do we make this so easy to understand? And like, so like literally sometimes it's almost funny to say, but the analogy is like, could, could a monkey do this? Yeah. Like could, could someone, um, or, or something who knows nothing about your background or has no knowledge of your product, go and use your system or instructions and be successful. Yeah. And if you can be like in that 95% success rate, I'd say that's like awesome. So thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. And you know, I also want to like add to, cause I feel like I just said that, you know, like all the, the bad stuff we do, I want to say that so many of our customers, the overwhelming majority are great people. Yeah. I'll tell you kind of, you know, who I think our customer base is and it's, yeah. it's changing and growing. Um, but I'm just seeing that it's so mo- mostly mostly men, but starting to get more into, with with um, more for women too. Cool. But the the base is just good quality people who believe in quality products mm-hmm. and use the products. Like that's our customer base, and that can range from firefighters to loggers to linemen, contractors, oil field guys, pipe fitters. I mean, I've even seen there was a guy who does um, what's it called when they drill oil in the ocean um uh they then on those rigs oh um an oil rig whatever oil rig in the yeah. ocean yeah like look he was doing that wow. and he was like showing me pictures and stuff cool um i've had guys buy boots that um they they go they're mi- they're in uh, cobalt mines and copper mines and stuff like that like wow. so many different things and it just all kind of comes back to this principle of like good quality person good quality product wants it to be awesome mm-hmm. and they're not afraid of a price tag because they believe in what they're buying and yeah. so the heart and soul of like what we're what we're about, good stuff, good good experience, good people. It's not complicated. Move on, yeah. you know, to the next. Like we're always about that. Just those key things. Do a good job. And so many people are awesome. I've had I've had guys buy us pizza, customers oh, cool. buy us lunch. Aww. Yeah, I've had I've that had customers nice. send us uh, Christmas gifts. I've had customers oh, um, cool. send us um, like all kinds of gift cards over email. I've had customers like. They'll buy a pair and then they'll just buy another pair just because like, hey, just thank you. That's you know, awesome. Like, I've had so much of that good stuff. Yeah. And I can't tell you how, if, if a bad experience makes you feel bad, well, yeah. then a good experience makes you feel twice as good as a bad experience makes you feel bad. You yeah. know, so just thank, a shout out to any of our customers listening. Like, thank you. when Or like sometimes people will write in, hey, I just want to say thank you for these boots. Like, I'm so happy with them. That's I awesome. take that email and I forward it to our entire company. Nice. Like anytime I get that. And everyone loves reading that stuff. We have a board that we hang up with like positive reviews and stuff. And we always tag each other when we get nice things. And so uh, overall majority is awesome. And the whole, you know, product customer service world, it's always going to change. It's always going to evolve. And it's just about the unrelenting commitment to get better. Mm-hmm. And I think that probably, ex- you know, extends to YouTube and it probably extends yeah. to contracting and it extends to everything, you know? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, um, thanks for coming on. We'll link to the video we made, which I'll I'll probably talk about that in the intro because I learned a lot, not just about boots making the video, but the whole thing was a really good experience and really fun. And looking back, I just, I really feel like, oh, I'm proud of the video, but I just really learned a lot from the whole process um, in a lot of different categories. That's really cool. (laughs) Boots among one of them, but also about making videos. And that's one of the first videos where I think I put myself like in the intro, kind of in the front. <laughs> Actually, I think my dad did show up in the intro. I can't remember now, but that was one where I was like, I gotta just like put myself out there a little bit. And so that was a good experience. And we'll link to that. We'll link yeah. to your website and your Instagram's great, Please. by the way. Thank that, you. Look at the Instagram um, feed if you're there, because the, really there's a lot of cool pictures of uh, the boots in use and in and really getting cool made things. And all that yeah, stuff. getting made yeah. all yeah. of it. Thanks, it's yeah. it's really neat. So thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for coming, Tim. Yeah. Tim's starting a podcast, and yep. one of his first episodes will be with my dad. That's why he's here. Yep. That's where he's going next. So if you want to hear that, I'm not sure what they'll talk about, but if you, I'll link to it in the description. Yeah, and you guys can uh, hear um, Tim talk with my dad, probably about boots and work and who knows what else. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, guys.